What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Dan here from Random Media Guys. And I know you guys were expecting me to do a review of The Expanse, which, ladies and gentlemen, I will have that out soon, but I stumbled upon another space-themed show recently that was really good, and I actually turned out like it. I'm actually talking about For All Mankind. If you guys might have seen it, it was, or seen the, app, the trailer for that, it's a Apple t uh, TV exclusive. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, I'm gonna say, first start out, it's a good show, you should, you should check it out, but I'm gonna go into a review, this is actually gonna be a proper review, um, but, yeah, so, let's talk about this show, so, if you guys don't know what this show is, For All Mankind is an alternate uh, history that pauses the question, what if the space race had never ended, what if we kept going to space? And what kind of ramifications might that have? You know, in terms of cultural and global and politics, you know, the, the geopolitics and even local politics and, you know, cultures. So, the, um, this thing, before it came out, got a lot of, uh, a lot of people were saying this, because there was a scene where, in the trailers where they show when we go into space, and they're like, oh, this is, you know, SJW stuff. I'm here to kind of show you, to show you why it's not quite uh, the way they wanted, thought it was. So, let's start. So, the point of departure in this timeline is that the Soviets managed to put a man on the moon a month ahead of, of us, U.S. Now, I have slight problems with that because... The Enron one kept failing until it was shut down in 1974. The Russians were still trying to push for moonshot by then. My only theory is that uh, one of the big things that put the Soviets back was the death of Sergei Korolev, who had died of cancer in, I believe, 1967. But, so I'm, I'm just, my head canon for this is that Sergei Korolev lived, and they managed to do it. I think it would have been more likely that Korolev figured it out, and then they would have landed after the Americans, but this is not that's not the point of the show. So the the first episode opens up with everyone watching T V. They hear about a Soviet lander being sent. They they think the according now they we find out that the C, the CIA th thought it was supposed to be unmanned, but it turns off out to be carrying uh, Alexei Leonov, who in this timeline becomes the first man to walk on the moon. What I found was kind of interesting was because I um that Leonov is one of the cosmonauts who died in a uh, accident with the um, with Soyuz capsule. So I thought it was kind of a nice little nod. And so because of this, uh, NASA, everyone's kind of in shock. And I thought that was kind of cool. Everyone's like, well, fuck. Like, and and there's, what's interesting is they're talking about that because of this, there's, there's like, oh, the Soviets won. You know, basically what the Soviets kind of did after the end one, like, well, the Americans won. But what was kind of cool is they're like, well, yeah, well fuck that. We're going we're gonna to kick some ass to take some names. And what's interesting is, a little spoiler. So in the first, first episode, the eagle lands on the moon. Or more like crashes. Now, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin still live and, you know, uh, get off. But basically they break their leg on one lander. And so because of this, during, um, uh, you know... They get back, you know, they have, so there's still this kind of talk about what's going to happen. And one of the main characters of the, of the story, his name is Ed ba Edwin ba Edward Baldwin. Or I'm just called Ed Ball. Now, he was the, in the, according to the story, he was the commander of Apollo 10, and he was slated to go on Apollo 15. Now, I have a slight problem with this as someone who's actually, not, not personal, but it kind of was, I'm like, okay, I used to be a, a huge NASA geek as a kid. I, I'm not going to joke. I, like, I knew, like, all the astronauts' names who were on Apollo kind of forgot. I can name a number of them. But I do know for a fact that the command, the crew of Apollo 10 was Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan. And Gene Cernan, who would go on to command Apollo uh, 17 and end up being the last man on the moon, along with Harrison, Harrison Jack Smith. So, but it, they changed it up. So, whatever. So, so Gus, sorry. Not Gus. I got the mix up. I'm thinking. So Neil and Buzz land on the moon. Because of this, the Soviets have to up the ante, and they send the first woman, who is Alexei 
or sorry, Anastasia Belikova, who I do believe might have been the first woman in space, but don't quote me. I, I, uh, so because of this, this time I, Nixon's like, well, fuck, damn it, we can't, we can't let the commies win. So he, so he, so he's like, well, we're gonna send women to space because fuck the Soviets because yeah. And I thought it was kind of interesting because the space race became becomes the major battleground of the of the Cold War in this case. So what what is going to happen is Nam ends five years early. So you think about it. There's a lot less dead, not less dead soldiers. There's a lot less, you know, just like of the you know, America hasn't quite quite um, you know, Nam isn't as seen as as bad as it was. In our time, because one of the big things that happened in the 70s was war reporters, and they showed all these horrendous things, so that's kind of... But the fact that they're like, we need to focus... Uh, but so, they, they start the uh, looking for women in the third episode to go into space. Uh, one of them happens to be the wife of one of the, one of the astronauts, Gordo Stevens, his wife, Tracy. gets the, Now, she's initially kind of one of those that... Uh, what's fun is like uh, they have Deke Slayton, who is a real person. He was he was one of the original Mercury Seven. He in our timeline went up in the Apollo Soyuz mission, which was really kind of cool. And so he, they come to him and saying, "Hey, we need to put a woman on the moon, and preferably a blonde." You you know, Nixon. And he's like, "Listen, if I'm going to put a person, I'm, I'm not." Gonna, uh, they got they got to be an astronaut. You can't just throw someone in a spacesuit. So they do they basically do a, a selection pass for the women, but it's accelerated. And they're and he's straight up like like a lot of them are gonna drop out. So what I thought was really kind of cool is that they have so they have her and they have uh, da- a character by the name of Daniel Poole who is a, an African American woman who was working at NASA, which I thought was kind of a cool touch because there were after watching the movie Hidden Figures, I'm like oh. So that's kind of a nice nod to that, you know. That shit actually was happening, which shows they did their freaking research, which I actually enjoyed. And so it was kind of cool. And because of that, she becomes the first African American in space and on the moon, which was kind of cool. So, so because of um, the Soviets pushing Belakova into space, um, the U.S. has to basically put, keep up with, like, well, well yeah, we're going to put women and we're going to be diverse about it because. And I like what I like about it. It's politically motivated, which makes complete sense for the time. There was this huge like we got to beat the commies. So um, we get to see the what I thought like that was that whole. So the third episode was called like, uh, Nixon's Women, and I like was they show the training. They um, and they show kind of like the the, uh, the issues at, at home. Some of the stuff, for instance. Um, Baldwin is one of the uh, teachers of the of the, uh, the the astronaut candidates, and he loses someone. And what's interesting is they point out a lot. Like what they never quite say is that Ed might be suffering from PTSD because he was shot down in Korea, um, and like when one of the, the female astronauts gets you know you know dies during training on the flying bed which almost killed Neil Armstrong I thought it was kind of a nice little touch like this thing almost killed Neil but she uh, what, what I thought was really kind of cool about this was you see how like he, when he when when he was trying to like things are falling apart and I completely understand I, I get like what Ed was going through so like, like he starts like breaking shit and that makes sense like he gets like but so, the thing goes on. Um, they, they select a female candidate who's named by the Molly Cobb, who kind of rubbed me the wrong way at first. But I kind of understood her thing. She's like, "Listen, I'm just here for me. I'm, I'm trying." And it's like, kind of at one point, we're like, "You're part of a crew." And all oh, I liked was um, that following the um, in the middle of this whole training thing. We find out that the Russians are deciding to build their own moon base, so they're basically told because at, at the same time Nam's ending, uh, one of the guys comes like, "Hey, you don't need to do this women thing." And Dick's like, "You know what? No, I'm going to do it. You know why? Because if it works, I earn a lot of 
credit. If not, so what I like is that if you look at these things, some people will go, oh, this is, you know, they, they're pushing uh, characters to be, you know, act out of their time. But you think, think about it, moving political has always been a thing. And so basically um, what they do is Edward... Uh, Edward ends up on a uh, commanding Apollo fifteen, and Gordo was going to be his his uh, his Lem pilot, but they swap him out for Molly because they need you know they want this you know political victory. Like, look, yeah, oh yeah, the Soviets think they think they're 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 uh, they're better than us. Well, we got we got a woman on the moon too, which is very. And what I like about this whole thing is during their training, the, the women receive letters from girls around the world saying, you inspired me, you know. And I thought it was kind of interesting because of this, in this timeline, STEM is, is being pushed in the 60s and 70s much harder. And we also get to see this through the eyes of um, another character by the name of Aleda, who is a Mexican emirate coming over. Her dad brought her over... Um, Actually, during the during the moon during uh, Eagle's landing, and you get to see you know, you know she she's kind of you know troubled about her mom's death, and what her dad does is kind of pick her out of her grief. He's like because he's working as a janitor over at the Johnson Space Center. He's like, look, he shows her he shows her the the, um, the Mercury, it's right, the Mercury, the, the Gemini with the, the t on top of the Titan. She's like, look, how about instead of like. Because she she get, became a pyro as kind of a way to deal with just how she deals with her grief. It's like how about instead of trying to burn stuff, you light a fire in this, and it it was kind of a nice little thing like showing that she gets inspired. We also have another character by the name of at least Margot Madison. She she so she's uh becomes the first like f female flight operator and eventually the first uh, flight director. And what I like is it doesn't feel. Like over pushing, you know, like sometimes, like you can't feel now, like oh, we need it, we're we got to push diversity. Like she wants to be flight director because she's like, I've been here since the beginning. She does some like political maneuvers, get so it's a very like if you watch show. But there's one thing that everyone that was um, no, screw it, I'm gonna skip that part, but I'll come to that later. But so following Apollo 15, uh, when once they find ice on the moon. Um, thanks to Mary, who's basically like, no, I, I think I see the, because they're, they see ice and they did find ice. Um, they decided to basically set up a permanent base. And so Skylab, the Skylab from our timeline is actually turned into a moon base, which they changed to, uh, Jamestown, you know, and the Russians set up their own base across the crater, <laughs> same place where they're getting their ice, but. So the so the uh, last of the sh last kind of three or four episodes takes place in nineteen. <coughs> Sorry guys, kind of sick, but in nineteen seventy four. And what I, what I thought was kind of interesting is they they look at some of the uh, psychological issues that that the astronauts might go to. For instance, Gordo starts kind of losing it on the mission because he's first he gets confined because he needs to kind of walk around you know he gets cabin fever so they actually show what can happen in an isolated environment um ed's convinced the soviets are spying on on him and this has you know comes back to you know you know being in the korean war he's very paranoid or and he's also at this point uh his kid gets uh he's dealing with isolate so, this, so what I thought of this series, I actually thought it was really good. I'm going to straight up say this was actually a really good series. I don't get why anybody was complaining. They're like, oh, it's SJW, whatever. I, I mean, I used to, I still will criticize stuff for being, you know, heavy handed when it comes to like, like, like Star Trek Discovery. They, they put a, a strong female character who's not at, at all compelling. These characters were you. You could tell these, and a lot of the, the motivations, the, the people in the story felt real. You felt like people, like, for instance, um, Mary was like, you know, her being like, I, I'm sorry, Molly was like, I, I just want to go into space, whatever. 
and and her kind of coming around to you know maybe I need to prove myself. Maybe I actually need to. So she basically knuckles down, and um, I also like one thing I liked was um, Alita's and Margot's story. So it ended up crossing because because her dad works at at NASA as a janitor. She you know basically was doing her homework in the observation room above Mission Control, where she runs into Mar Margot. And what I like was that because of that she ends up getting into a STEM school, a Kennedy, basically like, like I think it's like the JFK Memorial, like science center or whatever, because in this timeline, uh, Ted Kennedy ends up unseating Nixon as president. So I saw so that was kind of, so well, the one thing that did get kind of, kind of brought up that I've seen that people were like, Oh no, you know, you know, the, you know, the, you know, screaming SCW was the, was, the character of Ellen Waverly, who um, is in the story a closeted lesbian, who was actually having a relationship with the bartender at the rest at the bar that all the astronauts go to, and she's having a essentially a marriage of convenience with one of the engineers who is also secretly who is also closetly gay. And from what I understand of that time period, this makes a lot of sense. Um, a lot. There were a lot of I've heard a lot of stories of um, this is a gay and lesbian, a gay a gay man and a lesbian one marrying, just so they can keep up appearances. And the part of that was, and I thought this made sense, was um, this is motivated actually partly by an accident that happens on Apollo twenty three, where which killed Gene Kranz, who sat which is really sad because the man's actually still alive. But he, yeah, he gets killed when it, when it blows up, and the astronauts are basically ejected via the uh, escape uh, escape tower. But but because of that, they all get really paranoid, so they uh, start looking into um, Ellen and Larry, who is the other guy. And but what was interesting is during the during that time, um, they saw the fact that because many because even though it's not wasn't illegal to be gay, it was still kind of considered a you know, meant so a lot of people still view it as being mentally, you know, unstable or whatever. Cause that was the time. But what I thought was interesting because she, they get their marriage to get the FBI off their back because they're if they have something that's very definitive, it's kind of hard to argue. But so what's interesting is right before, uh, right around the last episode, she tells Deke. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm gay, and well, that was interesting. He kind of said like, "What the fuck, man?" And that was interesting is because he, 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 um, he. The reason why he let them in the um, Apollo program was partly because they were they were they were up to it. But I did I did find that the uh, it was it was it was handled well, and you can under you can understand the time period. What's Makes me wonder if, especially because the uh, so the last episode ends in the in like on seventy five, uh, probably about I think nineteen seventy five, and she's Ellen is the commander, current commander of Jamestown, and she sent Ed home because you know I won't spoil it. You should really watch this if you can. But they dealt with kind of the, the very ramifications of you know being far away, you know. You know, not being able to talk to your family directly, or only seeing them. So, and the, and the kind of paranoia that the Cold War caused. But the the last so a little thing if you haven't if you haven't seen this the final episode kind of has a post credits tease of the 1980s that they're sending they actually built, rebuilt a sea dragon and if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's pretty dope. It's basically a rocket, a big ass, the world's biggest rocket that launches from the water. Because it would literally destroy everything around it. So, the show was great. I uh, one of the things I'm gonna say I like, I really liked about the show. So, I, what did I like? Um, I liked the costume design. But I like because they actually progressed with era. They started out with every everyone in Mission Control. All the all the flight guys wearing, you know, what you think of as the, the 1960 uniform of the white color, you know, person, you know, 
white collar, white collared shirt, black slacks, maybe wearing a suit, you know, suit jacket. But as they got in the seventies, the the, the the color palettes they really changed. You saw people wearing browns and the striped shirts and different colors, and that was kind of cool. Is because of the wo- the women being in you know, astronauts. So <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So you had you had Mo- Molly, Ellen, Danielle, who was the first um, African American in space in this timeline, and Karen. That's right, Karen Tracy. I'm getting names. Right. I thought it was kind of cool is that because of this, you know, NASA's push for you actually get to see that in the control room. You see, um, an African American. Uh, one of the things that's kind of cool is that because of this, the I like the fact they showed the culture change, and that was kind of cool. For instance, the Equal Rights Amendment gets passed in this timeline, so you now women can go into combat now. But but the, the, the whole idea that that the culture of America slightly changed. There's, you know, people of all. I mean, the the Paul, Apollo twenty four had, along with Deacon and uh, and Ellen had an had, had an Asian American who sadly in the story ended up getting toasted in in the vent in in the uh, plume dry plume of of the, of the uh, third stage of the Saturn five. Spoilers, sorry, but. I thought I said the progression is very like like I could see it happening. I could actually even empathize with his character, especially for like when Ed gets mad. I I sometimes do want to break things, or the idea that that Molly is like, hey, I'm kind of uh, irreverent, but you know what? I'm just here to do a job. I'm not here to really inspire someone. I'm just here to do a job. But what she doesn't realize is that that is important. That some of these things do matter, especially on a political level. And the whole thing is basically a political drama. And I would say it could use some work. Like I had some issue, especially after watching the Expanse. I kept when, they, when for instance, and the, they have to do a deceleration burn uh, in the using the using the service module. So the fact that none of them were experiencing like like. No gravity, like gravity, due to thrust. I'm like, that's one thing the expanse did better. I'm like, come on, we have the expanse. You should at least make them look like they're going like that. I mean, I know it's probably going to be a lot with the service module, but still, it's a lot of thrust. But uh, so yeah, like I like the clothes progression. I like the fact that the, the cultural progression kind of it feels like somewhat nat- pretty natural. Um, the te- one of the things that I thought was kind of nice is that the, is that the tech evolved. You saw the, uh, for instance, the lunar module and the command module got upgraded. We lead success in model, like for instance, on like Apollo 24, that you could see they had like else, not advanced LCD screens, but primitive ones. And the, instead of things looking like basically a calculator, they were using input command. They were using a uh, computer programming language, which I was studying for computer science. I'm like, oh my god, I like that. I'm like. That's a cool detail, and I liked it was because I've watched some of the behind the scenes, and and one of the things that that part of the sold me on this thing it was is, is the whole thing was being produced by Ronald D. Moore, who was the creator of Battle the lead on Battle Circle the one on Sci Fi Channel, which was a great show. So the fact that this ha- they had this kind of um, you know pedigree. And they had uh, um, Ed Baldwin. Uh, Ed Baldwin was played by Joel Kinnerman. So, who, who you don't know, was in Altered Carbon. He played uh, Takeshi Kovech, which I kept thinking was like is it, the, the the funny thing about this because of that because of um, Ronald D. Moore. I kept joking around. This is actually a unofficial sequel sequel to Battlestar Galactica, and then they're gonna on the moon. They're gonna cover Cylon uh, Raider, which would have been fucking hilarious. But when work, then people are like, this is just a Battlestar sequel. Or, I have problems with that show. I do have... Uh, the Battlestar was a good show. I still have problems like why they didn't just leave the Galactica on a moon crater instead of throwing it in the sun with maybe a message saying, hey, this is what happened. Don't make the same mistakes twice. But whatever. But anyway, the both... I'd say this is a great show. Check it out. Um... It's got my personal recommendation, and uh, hopefully on Friday I will be giving you guys 
episode three of the expanse uh for season four and until then thank you so much and goodbye